The management of Stellenbosch University in South Africa has raised its deep concerns over the irresponsible use of alcohol on and around its campuses. This uh, comes after the university had to again suspend a student from his residence after reports that he urinated in a room of his fellow students on Saturday morning. It is reported that the student was severely intoxicated at the Endrag residence on campus when this incident happened. At least two similar instances have occurred in the university's residences, with one student expelled and another suspended this year. Joining us now to discuss more about the incident, it is Stellenbosch University's Rector and Vice-Chancellor, Professor Wim de Villiers. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning. It's, Good morning. It's a now, to let's talk about what's happening. The university management has raised deep concerns about the irresponsible use of alcohol on and around its campuses. Have they considered to maybe completely ban the consumption of alcohol on campus? Yeah, so we have, as you said, we have deep, deep concerns about uh, alcohol abuse and the incidents that arise from alcohol abuse and the affront to human dignity that occurs. So, in a sense, we're uh, we, we, we're almost at a loss as to, as to how to deal with these continuing incidents despite um, having instituted uh, significant measures, curtailing use and also uh, attempting to strictly regulate alcohol use in residences. But I think one, one has to also put it into a broader context. So uh, firstly, if one looks at the pandemic, and when the pandemic started in March 2020 and the South African government uh, instituted severe uh, uh, curtailed alcohol sales, there was a corresponding plummet in alcohol-related violence incidents and admissions to emergency units in hospitals. So the point I'm trying to make is this is a national problem and that a number of, uh, the majority, I would say, of, of violence-related uh, incidents in the country are actually uh, related to alcohol use. So that also underpins a recent call by government to increase the legal age of drinking to 21 years. Uh, that is the same in, in America. The second point is, is that alcohol abuse is clearly uh, prevalent in our entire higher education system because I'm also the chair of Higher Health, which is a organization that looks after health uh, in our student population, sec uh, tertiary student population of more than 2 million in the country. And it was found that alcohol is all use and also abuse of drugs is, is prevalent in, 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 in that population as well. And that that also has a strong link to gender-based violence. So in that sense, our campus is, is, is not isolated, but that does not mean that uh, we can just blame it willy-nilly on, on, on the greater context. So, and of course, our campus is, is increasingly diverse, and where these incidents occur and their possible racial undertones, one needs to be, we, we're extremely perturbed about this, and uh, we're, we're looking at this in, in great detail, and disciplinary processes will also uh, be instituted and, and will follow its due course. Well, now you've mentioned, you know, that this is not um, just restricted to the, your university. It's a national problem. Um, does this then reduce the angles or the racial uh, connotations that have been put around this? They're concerned about racial issues around the incident. Would you say, you know, that maybe that was blown out of proportion? Or, you know, you might agree that race does play a role in how the students have been uh, behaving. And, of course, if you look at the three cases, the three incidents, it's a white student urinated on black students' belongings and, and, and all of that. Uh, so so can, can race or racial issues also be talked about here? It is, it is certainly possible. In the, in the first case, um, the, the, there was a finding that there was a, a, a racial angle to it. Uh, we're talking about the incident in May, but that is currently being appealed. That student was suspended and then subsequently expelled from the university. In the second and third cases, those investigations are still underway. Uh, some of the, uh, both the perpetrators and the victims, they don't want to be uh, publicly uh, uh, identified. And so those processes are still underway. All right, uh, let's talk about how the university protects students against racial discrimination and I'm just going to read out a few tweets basically there are lots of people who hold the 
perception or the point of view that there is a huge racial undertone. Uh, someone says here, every month in the early hours of Saturday morning, a drunk, a drunk student at the university pees in another student's room will wake up on Sunday and he's been suspended with immediate effect. And then the university keeps quiet until the next incident and so the cycle begins. Now, there are several tweets that uh, a lot of people have put out expressing their concerns about how the university is handling it and how the university is protecting students from racial discrimination. We'd like your thoughts on that. Yeah, so first of all, I need to say this is it's completely unacceptable. It's an affront to human dignity, and we have a zero tolerance policy on on racism, gender based violence, items items of of, of this degree. Um, and we have, uh, well, since 1994, and uh, very significantly also since my tenure started in 2015, we have instituted a number of measures to uh, uh, to promote and to enhance uh, the, the, the transformation process in, in our university as well. Following this latest incident, I think to speak to your question is, does the university do nothing? No, absolutely not. It's not that the university does quite a lot of things. But the I think the important uh, investigation that we also launched included uh, 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 appointing a commission of an uh, independent commission of inquiry uh, headed up by Justice uh, C.C. Campepe, who is a retired constitutional, very respected retired constitutional court justice who looked at uh, investigated issues of, of systemic and institutional ra racism at the university. And her report uh, will, be, will be completed soon and will be provided to me. Uh, the university will study it very seriously. Uh, look at the rec recommendations and the report will be made public. Well, um, I, I also want to know, uh, because they, there have been more than one incident, or it's more than one incident we're talking about, you know, but the uh, reactions have been uh, different, the outcomes have been different. One, you know, student was expelled, the other was suspended. Um, so I, I want to know, you know, if, if these, you know, uh, um, reactions or the punishments, you know, were out of, you know, what was found in the investigation. Um, and also, uh, are you saying now, because we've all, you know, at, at least people around our age groups, have all been through the university community, and every now and then you might, you might meet a student, you know, that has abused alcohol. Um, and so is your university going to be taking a stronger stance on consumption of alcohol um, generally? Or, you know, is, is this only a problem because of what these persons did while intoxicated? Well, it's a, that's a multifaceted question. So let me first say that it's in, in, in my role as rector and vice chancellor who interacts with vice chancellors from across the globe, having recently attended a higher education conference, Times Higher Education in New York, where there were more than 80 vice chancellors globally present. This is not only a national problem. Uh, it's, as I also speak with my fellow vice chancellors around the African continent, we're part of the association, African Research Universities Alliance. This is actually a continental, it's a global problem. But so, so how, to, how to address this and how to, uh, especially post pandemic where many businesses uh, in Stellenbosch and in the Western Cape where they, they suffered in the entertainment industry, um, how do we how do we interact with businesses in town and in the city to uh, uh, promote an, a, a culture of responsible alcohol use? So it's all about education. Uh, so that's point number one. Then point number two, with regard to the seemingly different outcomes to these different cases. So I, I need to remind you that the first case was in May. That's run its course through our disciplinary process. Um, there was a there was an outcome. The student was firstly temporarily suspended, then suspended from the university, and then there was the outcome that the student was expelled from the university. But the, he he has a right to appeal, and that's currently ongoing. So the other two uh, processes are still in that process. I did as 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 vice chancellor uh, temporarily suspend the students, and and um, but. But the, the outcome still needs to be, final outcome still needs to be determined. All right. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your time this morning and uh, for clearing uh, these issues uh, with us. We will look forward to speaking with you again.
and we hope that uh, the Stellenbosch University has less of these type of issues. Thanks for your time once again. I, I would certainly hope so. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do enjoy Absolutely. the rest of your day.